is making a music player in 40 minutes flat and uh, this is the first slide in about 47 slides okay so get ready for a, a really long presentation just kidding this is a bar cramp right it's a freaking bar cramp no slides no bs um, so this is my contact details so my previous if you have any questions re regarding what you uh, uh, see here today just feel free to email me and that's my twitter handle right so this is what we'll try to do. So it's going to be a very basic session on Android. If you know Android, um, this is not a session for you because we'll cover everything all over again, right? So we'll try to do some basic stuff like playing music, pausing music, stopping, fast forward, rewind. Uh, we'll also use some images as buttons like play, pause and rewind buttons. If we have time, we'll try to do uh, stuff like total time, elapsed time. So that, you know, if the music is playing, you can see how much time is left in the song. Right? How much is total time? Uh, we'll try to do a seek bar. Right? You have seen a seek bar when a music plays. Try to do that as well. And again, if time uh, remains, which I don't think it will, we'll try to do proximity and axonometer as well. So this is a proximity sensor on your phone. Okay, on the top uh, left hand side or right hand side. If you click on that, like if you just put your hand on top of that, you'll start playing music. Right? Or if you shake the phone, you'll start playing music. Right? So all kinds of things like that we can do, but I, again, I don't think there'll be enough time, right? So for this, it's it's going to be a very practical session. So if you have a laptop with the ADT installed, please take it out so that we can work together, right? So how many of you are Android programmers or Java programmers uh, or know about Java Android? Cool. Okay. So let's get started, right? So this is Eclipse. Uh, how many of you have used Eclipse before? Okay. So Eclipse is basically an integrated development environment and it's one of the most popular environments for Android application development. So first thing we'll try and do is um, create a simple application. Okay. So uh, go to file. So how many are doing it with me over here? Three, four, five, six. Perfect. Right. So we'll try and create a new application. For that, go to file new Android application project. So you can't see that over here, but go to file new Android application project. You should see something like this. And feel free to stop me, ask me any kind of questions. Uh, if you have any doubts, let me know. Right? Okay. So we are type the application name, just call it whatever you want. We'll call it music player. Right? So lots of other things are uh, can be filled up over here, stuff like uh, the minimum version of Android that you want to support, the maximum version and so on. Keep everything as a default value. Uh, just keep on going next, next. This is where you create the icon for your application, right? Uh, you might have a very nice application icon. Let's say you can change it and choose, uh, let's say the play button, okay? You change the color, the green play button, right? Yeah, sorry. Okay, next. Keep everything at its default value and click on finish. Okay. So your application. Yeah, yeah. Just, just click on next, 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 finish. So an activity, um, like he pointed out, right? Is your screen an Android? Okay. So let me show that. So to run this application on your phone, you need a real phone, but in case you don't have a phone, you can create an emulator. Emulator is like a virtual device. So we'll uh, create a virtual device. To do that, you have to click on this icon on the top uh, left, okay? This little Android icon, click on that. And this will open up a list of the virtual devices or emulators that you have. In, uh, so I have uh, like a lot of emulators because I have to uh, uh, test my application on different phone sizes. So uh, over here, click on new, okay, and over here you have to create the device. So you can give it a name, you can give, let's say, a uh, test device. Uh, you can say what kind of device you want. I want, let's say, a 7-inch tablet, right? I could select that. I could select a Galaxy Nexus, which is like a standard phone. You can select a Nexus 1, Nexus S, and so on, right? So for our example, you can uh, select a Galaxy Nexus, keep everything as to its default value, uh, Give it some SD card. So over here, you can give it an SD card, a virtual SD card. You can give it a 64 meg SD card. And 
select on, select this option used host gpu okay so this uses the graphics card on your laptop to make things faster okay and then click on okay okay uh, i have just created that so i'll just launch the same thing so once you create that uh, a virtual device like this will pop up and then uh, click on that click on start okay like click on this and click on start once you do that a virtual device will so pop up like this yes um, these are the virtual devices you have created yes phone, correct correct i have i have created so by default it will be all blank okay. Okay. right so emulator should uh, pop up like this something like this right very simple emulator so it might take some time to start right it's starting for you guys okay in that time we'll go back to our application so this is our application it has many folders as you can see on the left hand side uh, it's got a source folder gen folder libraries uh, resource layout and so on right so by default this thing opens up which is the ui of the activity to, to maximize the double click on it and look something like this right so we need three buttons over here play pause and stop right so we'll drag and drop three buttons drag and drop first you see that this hello world thing is there right i'll quickly run this and see how it runs right so click on this click on so this is how you run the application click on that click on the top play button android application click on okay so how many of you have started the emulator it's working it's still here good so just run your application excuse me yeah Just yeah, yeah, it's perfect as well. Yeah, you can do that. So if you run it, do you see the hello world like that? Yeah, it should detect. So in case it doesn't detect, just let me know. Okay. So this is your hello world program. You already done with the hello world program in around five minutes. Okay. Next, uh, yeah, just you get something like this. Just click on OK. So this is the UI of your application. Okay, uh, you've come to the screen, everybody. Perfect. So just delete this hello world message. You don't want to see this like hundred times. Delete it, and drag and drop some buttons from the top left. Just click on it and press delete. Next, drag and drop the buttons. Uh, drag and drop it over here. Drag and drop it anywhere actually. Over here. Three buttons. Okay. All good. Okay, perfect. Okay. So this is the visual, uh, you know, uh, UI editor. What we need to do is go back and see the code that actually generates this UI. So to do that, uh, click on the bottom over here. You have the XML file that generates this. Click on that. So it's the same view in its XML part. So this is the actual code that generates the UI, right? So it's got something called a relative layout. Uh, we won't get into what a relative layout is. Basically, a way of arranging all the buttons. So there's a linear layout, there's a relative layout, and so on. Relative layout is where each button is arranged in some respect to each other, or with respect to its parents. It's something complicated. Let's read it, right? So these are the three buttons. Okay, these are XML elements like this. This is one button. The second button, and this is the third button. Okay. So each button has got a width and a height. It's got a width with something called wrap content. Basically, this says that the button will occupy as much space as its content. Okay. So if the text inside the button, so this is the text attribute. If you want to change what is the text inside that, we can change that. So let's do that quickly. Instead of calling it, let's say button, we'll say this is uh, play. Okay, the second one is pause, and the third one is stop. I know I'm going a little fast, but we're kind of short on time. So just let me know if you have any problems with this. Right? Play, pause, and stop. Save it. Go back to the graphical layout, and you can see the text has changed inside of it. 
cool quickly run this um, again minimize it uh, click on music layer the same will run it in a different way right click on it run as android application you can do either one you can click the play button or you can do this okay three buttons play pause and stop so who can tell me what should we do next think of java think of android yeah event handler perfect right let's do that so um, if you go back into the code for the layout this is an important thing to remember here that each button has an id okay the first button is called button 1 second button is called button 2 and the third one is called button 3 right so what we need to do is go into the our code of the application and then get a reference to all these three buttons using these ids okay but to do that we need the button ids remember button 1 button 2 button 3 so let's go back can you modify the button absolutely yeah absolutely so what i could do over here is uh, let me do that so i could change this to let's say uh, play play button right and then uh, actually this button is the second button is arranged with respect to its first button it's on the right hand side so i have to change that over here as well it's to the right of button 1 so i have to change it over here that's why i don't want to complicate things but you can definitely do that right so let's go back so on the left hand side you see all the folders inside the source folder this is where your application source is contained right this is where you do all the coding so you can open this file called main activity.java okay we close all this stuff Okay. So this file is called main activity dot Java. This is the one that's default, uh, that's there by default and is created for you. Okay. So this is something called an activity. So any application, any screen you see in Android is an activity. So uh, this is an activity. If you press the home button, uh, I can't see the home button over here. Let me. So if we go back, it's not being shown on the screen, but let me press it over here. So this is also another activity. So any screen you see in Android is an activity. Okay. So this is the activity that's created for you by default. It's called main activity, and it extends the activity class. Okay. And it's got a method uh, that's created by default called on create. So whenever an activity is created, this method is called. Okay. So an activity is created, it is paused, it is stopped, and so on. Okay. So when it's created. it calls this method called set content view basically sets the view of the whole application or the screen with whatever we have done in the layout so layout is where you design the ui i have three buttons okay this is where you tell the application that okay activity set the layout to the one that i designed okay which is r.layout.activity main so basically saying resources in the resources folder there is a layout folder inside the layout folder there is an xml file called activity_main okay set the view to that file okay this is a kind of a reference which is a little complicated and uh, uh, yes okay. multiple layout no you can have one layout per activity but you can have fragments and so on so you can do that not directly but indirectly so for example if you want to show a complex view right uh, let's say you're doing a twitter application <laughs> each row is made up of multiple layouts small layouts so you have a picture of a person then you have text and then you have another picture and so on right so you can have multiple small layouts those are called view groups okay so each button you see over here uh let's run the application so each button is a view so this button is a view in android this whole thing is an activity this is a view this is a view all these are views any picture is also a view okay so after you set the view of the whole application to the layout file the next thing is what we what are we going to do event listener right first we're going to get the reference to the button so let's do that Okay. 
So this line gets us a reference to the button. So what I'm saying is this is, uh, I'm creating a button type and I'm just getting the button from the view. So I'm getting the ID. So the ID is r.id.button1. Remember I told you that you need to remember the ID. right? So you're saying that I want the button or I want the view which has an ID of button1, r.id.button1. Find the view which has an ID of that. And then I'm basically converting that view to a button type. Button is one type of view. Images are another type of view. Okay, so I'm getting a reference to that view and then converting it into a button. Okay, any questions here? This might look a little uh, scary. Any questions? Come on, it's going to be interactive. It's bar camp. It's not uh, some school or college. Yes. One, is it finding, find inflection? Uh, so uh, I can explain that it will actually take time. So what happens is whenever you create a new resource, so uh, let me explain that. So all these are resources, all your layouts, all your images, right? Uh, this is this layout that you've created, the whole thing, the visual layout. This is this whole thing is a resource in Android. Okay, resource is like uh, an image is a resource. If you're playing music, that's a resource. All those things are resources in Android. So each button is also a resource. So when you create a new button, Android automatically takes that and catalogs it. Catalogs means it creates a reference to that. Okay, creates a reference to that in this file called r.java. So let's say whenever I create a new button, it's given a unique identifier for that button. The reason it does that is so that later when we need that button in code, it can just use this and get a reference to that. We don't need to do a fancy kind of import, you know, this file into our Android project and so on. You can just use this uh, R, R is the class over here, dot ID, dot button one, button two, or button three. So this class gets auto auto created, auto populated, correct. So never modify this things. That's why it kind of didn't show you guys. So that's how you kind of create that button. So you can see there are some errors. Let's fix those. So yes, so you just hover over it and you can just import the button. So you ha haven't imported all the packages. So button has a separate package. Hover over it, click on import button. Okay. This is how we've created a reference to a play button. Similarly, we do that for uh, pause and stop buttons. Okay. Copy paste. Okay. Three buttons, three references. Next, as you guys said, uh, we need a event handler, right? Which takes the event. So what we'll do is we'll take play button and we'll attach a uh, on click listener. Play button dot set on click listener. Okay. Inside that, what you do is just press uh, say new to auto complete. Press control uh, space on your laptops. Why are those warning symbols coming there? Yes, that's a good question. So uh, basically, this is coming because I'm not using it till now. Okay. It's local variable and it's not used. Basically, if I use it, this will go away. So I'm going to use it right now. Okay. So play button dot set on click listener new. After new, press control space. It will auto complete. Press enter, and it you know basically uh, sets up the listener for you. So what we're doing is taking the play button, setting an on click listener on top of that. So whenever it's clicked, it will go to this listener. Okay, which is a on click listener and it will go inside the on click method. Okay, let's close that. So I'm creating a new on click listener on demand inside that anonymous inner class in Java. Play button set on click listener, something inside that is the on click. We get some errors basically, you have to import this. So uh, hover over on click listener, click on import. Okay. Any questions till now? No. Next, we'll do the same thing for pause and stop buttons. Okay, so that uh, we can detect when they are clicked. So let's do that. This 
maximize this. Pause button and stop. Same thing, copy paste. Cool. Next, next is what? Huh? Add events actually play the music, right? So, uh, yes. So you guys are following me till here, done this, great, okay. So like I told you, right, every, uh, any kind of image or text or uh, even music, right, it's basically a resource in Android. It's not code, it's not database, it's a resource, right. So even the MP3 or something that we want to play is a resource and we need to put it in the resources folder. So let's create a new folder in resources, okay, we'll call it raw, R-A-W new folder, right click on resources, right click and new folder, okay, okay, we will call it RAW, RAW is for any kind of RAW format, like any uh, real RAW format, so, no, no, you can call it whatever you want, click on finish, creates a small folder called RAW, okay, so now, Find the MP3 file that you want to play, okay, uh, and just find a file, and I'll show you what I'm doing. So here, so this is my desktop. I have a file called if I rise dot MP3. Okay, so Android has a problem with playing files with uh, both capital and small letters, so it's a bit of a problem. So right now we'll just rename it to something simple, okay. We'll Rename it to small a dot mp3. Okay, find any file, rename it to a dot mp3. Okay, and we are ready for importing this into Android. Okay, so you just wait a minute, everybody's, uh, everybody does that. Okay, so once you do that, what you do is drag and drop this file into the raw folder. So take the a.mp3, drag and drop it to raw folder. Okay, any uh, any audio format, mp3 or wave is better. I'm not sure if everything will be played by the emulator. So to be safe, mp3 is good. Name it anything simple, small letters without spaces. So just make it a.mp3. Be safe, right? So it asks you select how file should be imported. Uh, first option is copy file. So it will copy the files into the raw folder, in the actual raw folder. So we'll do that. So click on OK. After that, you can see the raw folder is actually filled up with some file. It's the same MP3 file. Okay. So now we need to create the music player uh, object that will actually play this. So let's do that. Inside your class, okay, this is inside as a global variable. So we'll call it so there is an app, uh, object called media player so media player package we'll call it uh, okay you have to implode this uh, media player package so this is the declaration after you let's say after the main thing after content view Let's initialize it. So music player is equal to so you can see that R has already indexed a dot mp3. So now I can use R dot raw dot a as a reference. So let me explain the statement. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm creating an object of type media player. And I'm saying media player create an, this object from this a.mp3. So I'm initializing that with a.mp3. Okay. The first uh, parameter is the this object. So it's basically a context. It's telling where to play it. So it's basically playing it in that activity, in our home activity, main activity. 
music player is equal to media player dot create. So this is just creating it. It's not going to start playing or anything. So how did it find uh, raw? It's a good question. So just like when he created buttons, it automatically created these id r dot id dot button one. Okay. Similarly, whenever you drag and drop anything, right? <coughs> Android in this R dot Java, which is auto generated, right? It will go and basically create this for you. Just like you do it for the button, the same thing happens for any kind of resource. Okay, you guys are with me, right? Perfect. So next, next what? Actually, play it, right? So inside the play button, we'll start playing it. So play button dot start. Uh, no, not play button to start. Sorry, it will be music player dot start. Sorry. <coughs> okay. Inside the on click, you're basically starting the music. Just delete this crap, and there you go. Inside the pause method, pause on click, what you do is music player dot pause. And the last one, stop. Okay. Any questions to this point? So the pause method is for any resource? No, no, no. This is for the media player type of resource. So I'm using the media player object. So media player has those methods for pausing, stopping, and so on. Media player control T. Nothing happens. Whoa, whoa. Control P. I have Mac. So, oh, what do you want to see? Oh, class hierarchy. Media media dot media player. So let's quickly run this program and see what happens. Has it run? No, it's still running. Okay. So any questions till this point? Simple. Uh, we created an activity. We added buttons. We added listeners to those buttons. We added the media player object. Dragged and dropped the file. Initialize and playing and pausing it. Right. So play it. Starting. Okay. Supposed to. Is it playing for anybody? Huh? You like bar camp? Yeah. It is playing. It's very very light. Okay. So it is playing. It's maximum volume. So you can come over here and listen. It's it's over here. I should have chosen some Hindi song. You can hear it right now, right? It's got a very slow start. Yeah. Just chosen some rock song. Right? Yeah. So. Uh, it's playing and now you press, press and pause, it stops, uh, it pause playing. You can press, press and play again, it will start playing again. Do those controls work for this? Which controls? So those are not working because uh, this is a Nex Galaxy Nexus uh, emulator. So there are on screen buttons. Okay. So, yeah, so after restart the emulator, it will take some time. So it's all at the bottom. So if you see a Galaxy Nexus, the volume should work. The home buttons are at the bottom, right? You can pause it and again you can stop it as well. So if you guys have gotten it, cool. So next we can go back and see what you want to do, right? So we've done play, pause, stop, right? Next we can do fast forward, rewind, okay? And then we'll change the look to some play buttons or whatever, right? Okay, so let's add two more buttons, add listeners to both those buttons and see uh, we can implement uh, fast forward and rewind. Cool. This took like 20 minutes for the music player. Okay. Two more buttons, go back to your activity main.xml file. 
drag and drop, let's say rewind on the left hand side if you can. Uh, it doesn't work, so we'll put a button at the bottom for rewind, button on the right hand side for fast forward. Okay, we'll change the text again to rewind. Okay. Now we'll go into our activity and get the listeners for them. First, we have to get the buttons. So. Sure, but I want to show how you can fast forward. That's going to be useful in Seekbar. I'll do that next. So, uh, some cool things I want to show. So, this is let's say a uh, rewind button, right? That's the first one. Rewind button. Fast forward. Okay, rewind and fast forward. Same thing. Okay. So over here I'll try to fast forward. So what I'll do is I'll check if it's playing. If it is playing, before that I'll check if it's null or not. No, it's okay. Let's not check for all those things. If it's playing, then I will do music player dot seek to. So the function over here, uh, the method over here is seek to. Okay, it goes to that position. So what you can do is music player dot get current position. Is five thousand. This is rewind, right? Okay, so what I'm doing, I'm taking the same object. If it's playing, I will go to some place, okay, which is the thing in the brackets. So I'll get the current position. I'll subtract 5,000. That's 5,000 milliseconds. Five seconds. I'll go into the past, right? So it's rewinding five seconds. Okay. So I'll get the current position, which is going to be some seconds or some milliseconds, and I'm going to minus 5,000 and set it to that position. Same thing for uh, fast forward. Over here, we'll just add 5000. Okay. Quickly, let's run it. We're almost out of time. But yeah. Can you actually do it as uh, 2x or 3x? Yeah, absolutely. You can just add it, add whatever value you want. You so can. Will it just go to that position and stop there? Or? It'll start. Uh, so it depends. If it's playing, it'll continue playing. So it go there and start playing. Playing, yeah. yeah. So it's still playing. Have it, uh, rewind to the end. You can do that. You can you can set position to zero. And how do I increase the speed? Increase the speed of playback. Yeah. It's a good question. Let's see if there's a method. There should be a method. There should be a method. I'll I'll get back to you with a particular method. Okay. So let's run this. Okay, so first let's start playing. Okay, so I will uh, I'll fast forward it so that you can. Yeah. Okay, so this lady's voice is finally audible. Okay, then you can rewind. And okay, so we've got play, pause, stop, rewind, fast forward. Okay, next, what should we do? Uh, seek button, seek bar. Let's do that. So you guys have done this? Yes. Sure? Okay. So let's actually do uh, this thing where you can see what is the position of the object. So let's just before seek bar, let's do that. So what we're going to do is find out the current position of the uh, song and the total time for the song. Okay, let's do that. So both of them are going to be text. So it's called text view. Okay, drag and drop two text views over here. 
one text view over here and one text view just on the right hand side okay so these are again in the form widgets uh, folder let's go to the code and note down the ids for those text views so you will have some text on that and let's call it uh, not plain change the text to let's say not plain whatever right so you'll have uh, some text views over here right so let's w put the second text view just below it otherwise it won't look good okay something like this so note the ids of the same text views uh, one is text view 1 one is text view 2 okay let's do that let's go back over here just like you did for the buttons we need a reference to the text views as well so let's do that text view uh, we'll call it uh, elapsed time select text view one this time okay and that's the total time the second one is the total time Okay, so one is going to show us the elapsed time, one is going to show us the total time. Same like a seek bar, we'll do the seek bar next. Uh, five minutes? Five minutes, got it, good. Okay, so what we need to do, now you guys tell me, what you need to do to continuously show me the latest time? It's going to continue to show me, it's not going to be one time, it's going to show me like every, let's say, 200, 300, 500 minutes. Yeah? You need a timer. So how will you do it? Uh -huh. Thread, right? So Android, uh, just like Java, you can create a thread. So that thread will be always running in the background and it will wake up every 500 milliseconds and kind of show the uh, update, okay? So what we can do is total time, we can show it whenever uh, play button is pressed, right? So what we can do is total button, total time, set text, okay, uh, is equal to music player dot get duration okay make sure you convert it into a string okay so basically this tells you okay ah. you just get this one So we're taking the total time, that's the text view, and we're adding the, uh, we're just showing the total time, okay? So let me quickly run this and show it. Fine, yeah, last few things. We have like three minutes. Okay, so once we start playing, okay, can see this is the total time in uh, milliseconds okay so it's 27.8 something okay Pause. stop it next we'll do the uh, thread very quickly right. so go outside and let's create a new handler you know handlers in java okay let's create a new handler import handler okay, and override the method called handle message okay so this method will be called every time you want to update something so let's do that inside that we say um, okay let's create this Let's define this as a global variable so it's accessible anywhere.
okay so it's accessible everywhere so now what we going to do is kind of update it okay music player also if you do it look okay so what we're doing is elapsed time we're setting a text to music player dot set uh get current position okay and how much time do you have we are out yeah. okay chalo we'll we'll um, we we need around around 5 more minutes for this so probably we'll catch it offline right yeah cool okay thanks guys